this video, I'm going to show you how you can take the geometry node standard primitives and set them up so you can use them within the 3D view here. Start to utilize these during your pr modeling projects, potentially, if you, you find a use for them. And this is really quite good because it gives you a little bit more flexibility than just pressing Shift A and creating a new cube or uh, cylinder or whatever the case there. And you can still use this with things like box cutter uh, later on and actually start to uh, chisel up these shapes like so. So that's what we're going to do. And let's just get into it, all right? So let's go ahead and start a new Blender scene, and we're going to go and do this with the default cube. First, geometry nodes, you really don't need any of this uh, default cube here. So we're just going to go into edit mode, hitting tab, press A, X, delete all the vertices. Call it a day. Hit geometry nodes up here, create new. Okay, and so this is the setup we get. Make the preview window a little bit smaller so we get a little bit bigger of a view down here. But we have an input and we have an output okay normally it inputs the geometry right and well we deleted most of it so it's kind of like a, an empty blank area for us to work in now so we can press shift a and we can create mesh primitives and let's just do the cylinder first and so we can go ahead and do cylinder and drop it in here you'll see it detaches from this so uh, we're still going to utilize the input though we're going to press the n key bring out uh, this side panel will go to group and you'll see we have an ability to set things up over here like so so we'll just push that a little bit closer there all right so we have things we can put or set up as inputs and that will be what shows up over in the modifier panel right so uh, right now by default it's set up we got different values here we're going to just pretty much replicate this we're not even doing anything hard here but that could be a little bit challenging if you've never set a system like this up before you don't know what you're doing so uh, we're just going to fly through it. We're going to click the plus sign, and we can see we need one, two, three, four, and five, right? So let's just do uh, five of those real quick. We got it set up. There you go. Unfortunately, we got to kind of like scroll wheel through that unless we drag it open and further. Um, but there's different colors here for different things. If you hover over these, it actually tells you what it is. In this case, it's an integer, and in this one, it's going to be a float, right? So uh, what we can go ahead and do is we can set these up as such. And we can see float needs to be integer, three integers, right? And then we're going to be doing the, um, the floats down here, which it happens already to be at floats, so the gray ones. We're good there. We'll connect them later. What we want to do is go through these and rename them real quick. It is kind of important to do this. Otherwise, you won't be able to tell what's what. So in this case, it's vertices for the first one. It's going to be side segments next. And so you should be able to get through this pretty quick. And uh, set all these up. Main uh, on this one is going to be f oh, not file segments, fill segments. What am I doing? All right, so there we go, fill segments. Last one's going to be a radius, or the second from last. And last but not least is depth. Okay, so it looks awfully familiar now, right? Because these are going to basically set up these control sections here as the input, and it's going to feed into this, and you can adjust it without getting back into the geometry node screen, which is great. Now we do want to match the numbers here as well. So vertices is at 32 by default. So 32, all right. Now the minimum here for a cylinder, you could technically display it at three. When you're doing like subdivision, you want to, you don't usually want to go below six. Um, otherwise you won't get a cylinder, but when you're doing low poly modeling, you might use three even. So it's nice to have it and be able to set it to three. So that's going to be our min. And then the maximum will go up to whatever number you crank this thing up to. So uh, that should work out quite well with that one. Uh, side segments here appears to be one as default. And so the min's also going to be one in this case as well. Okay. Same with the fill segments. So we're going to do fill segments one, fill segments one on the default and min. Uh, radius here is going to be a default of one, but the min could actually be zero. So you could take it down to a zero size radius if you really wanted to. All right, and depth, once again, two meters, and we can set the min to zero if we want. And that should work out there just like that. So now we could just plug these things in, vertices to vertices, side segments to side segments, fill segments to fill segments, and radius to radius, and depth to depth. And this one's actually really easy. That's all you gotta do to set this up just for the geometry part of it. If you wanna try to working out UV maps and things like that, it's a different story, but uh, for now, you can see it's all over here, but this hasn't been updated. You need to right-click these and reset them, or just hit Backspace. So you can just reset them real quick and do it like so. Now, you'll see it comes back to life here, okay? And so after we go through this whole process here, it would be nice to rename everything so you understand 
uh, what you're creating here. I'm just going to name it cylinder. And you can name the geometry node itself cylinder. You can come over here. You can paste cylinder over here for the modifier. You could go to the cube and name it cylinder as well. And also it's mesh data. Why not name it cylinder as well? And then, so you got all that set up. You can go ahead and just right click this, mark it as an asset. And now in our scene here, if I was to right click and do a horizontal split, you'll see under our asset browser, in the current file, not all of my stuff, we now have a cylinder set up like so. Now it'd be nice to maybe replace that icon because it's, it's got a draw error issue first of all, but um, it's kind of boring. So if you want to make a custom icon later on, you can do that. You just um, select it, press in, bring out the side panel. You can create like a 512 by 512 thumbnail. You can load it up if you want to uh, do something like that. And then I think you have to pack it and you'd be set and good to go there. Maybe you don't have to, I don't know. Whatever the case, when you're done with all that, you save this Blender file somewhere in the directory that you're going to use for your asset browser. So you just save it as whatever you want. You want to say non-destructive cylinder, or you want to do a whole bunch of different ones at the same time. You could do um, primitives or whatever the case. You go ahead and start saving uh, your Blender file. And then later on, if you haven't set up the asset browser, you do need to point the file path here to the folder that you have saved everything in. And that way, when you save your preferences, you'll get either, um, you'll get, you basically get your assets in uh, the regular asset browser from there on out after doing that. So, uh, but that's just one object. You can of course always create other objects if you want to create a cube. And we'll go ahead and just delete all of that real quick. You can see our cube has been created. We can create a new, you know, make sure it's selected, not this one, this one. Create new. We can press shift a we can do mesh primitives we can do a cube toss it right here okay St same process basically more or less i just go through this one this one's a little bit easier to do because there's not as much, many inputs so we have a grand total of three or four excuse me and the top one here this this purple one this is a vector okay so come over here you click vector and there you go that's all you need to do for the most part the other ones, of course, seem to be integers. So we can go ahead and set all those integers. And just plug them in, right? Um, well, before we do that, control and right click and drag. And it might only work with Node Wrangler, I'm not sure, but um, Node Wrangler add ons pretty good. Anyways, uh, we need to set these things up first. So I'm completely just trying to fly ahead here. But uh, so we'll do name size. You could do these one at a time, but just go for the names first. And vertices X. And vertices Y. And vertices Z. Okay, if these were out of order or you want to rearrange the order, just use the arrows. You can see you can shift where they show up at. All right, so you can kind of organize them if you needed to. All right, so there we go with that. Now let's go ahead and hit some of these values in here. So for the size, we can see it's going to be a um, one, one, one. For the min, you could set it to zero. You could leave it at infinite. You could actually go to negative values if you wanted to. I'm not sure if you would want to do that. I think you might in some situations, um, but it'd be easier just to set it to zero perhaps. And so we'll go ahead and do that. And then now size is done basically, right? Yeah. So we can go ahead and do these other ones over here. So we're seeing the vertex uh, count here is going to be 2, 2, and 2 for defaults on all of them. And that's great. So we can go ahead and just uh, type these in real quick. Defaults at 2. And the min on this one, I believe, is 2 as well. Okay. And it's so that it'll properly uh, create the cube. So you'll want to test these um, at, after you're done kind of setting them all up. And just make sure they're going to work. And you can see here, that one was much easier to deal with than the uh, cylinder per se, right? So plug it all in. And at this point, we should be seeing a cube. And we don't see a cube. Okay, so which one of these broke it, I think? All right. Oh, you know what? No, it's not broken. we got to reset it. That's kind of annoying, right? It does that every time. So reset, hit backspace, and there we go. Now we got a cube at um, one, one by one, or it should be at one meter by one meter by one meter, right? So there we go. Now we have that set up. And this one has, sub subsequently, it has all the right naming on it for the most part, except for this Geonode section cube. And this one here, uh, 
might want to rename cube as well. All right, so now you can definitely save this file. Uh, next time you start Blender up, I already had these two made. So uh, your asset browser, you know, go ahead and load it up. You'll see we can delete the default cube, and now we have a cylinder, and we also have a cube, right? And they're both set up as such, like so, okay? And that means that basically when we're working on a project, you know, if we want to uh, duplicate this even and rotate, hit RX, hold control, we want to scale this up or down or move it or whatever the case here, um, we can do this. Now, side note, it doesn't like being scaled. I just want to point this out. Uh, there's certain things that might happen later on, like if you try to add a like a bevel with hard ops, you see it changes the scale back to one. I'm not sure exactly why it does that. Maybe it's an error, who knows. Um, but if we use bevel over here for whatever reason, the scale doesn't change. So kind of an interesting thing that you might want to pay attention to. It could happen. Uh, you might want to just use a regular modifier uh, per perhaps. But um, if you didn't change the scale here, and you left it at ones to begin with, and you were to change just the radius instead, and maybe do some things like that. Hold shift while moving that if you want a little bit more control. Um, now you can do things like Boolean unions to each other, right? Not even a big deal. Uh, you want to do uh, some box cutter in it with ingon cuts. Uh, we can go through this process. Let's try that a little differently. Let's move them out of the way. And so maybe we can do some box cuts. Chisel off the top here a little bit, you see? Okay, so we can in fact do this now. And when we need to update the base here, we go back to that cylinder node, and you can see we can actually adjust any of these at any time, right? So in this case, I think we got a, we did the boolean the other way around. So using hard ops, you select your base, you hit Q, you hit E, um, and you would be able to mouse wheel through the different cutters here. And now you can go ahead and select that one. You see it has the node on it. So we can crank those up and down as well. See, so we can go down to three. And it won't let you go down past three now. So uh, quite useful in my opinion. It would be nice if they worked a little bit better perhaps with uh, hard ops. But also there is no shade auto smooth for these things in Blender uh, 3.6 at least. Blender 4.1 will be adding shade auto smooth. But 4.1 has a little bit of an issue. Like it's going to use auto smooth as a modifier. But they forced auto smooth to be on. Like you have to use a modifier with all of your geometry now. Not just the. The, um, the geometry node pieces, which they were supposed to do it, they're supposed to have both, and I guess they, they aren't doing it that way. I don't know why. Um, but that's going to cause a little bit of a problem with at least my workflow, and maybe a few of yours as well. So just be warned on that one. You might, you might consider not using, um, you might consider not using 4.1 just yet. You can see, like, you can't modify a uh, geometry node piece either. Uh, no, well, it's, you can't do it with the with the way it's set up right now. That's not to say you can't take one of these and hit Control A and apply scale, and um, or excuse me, apply the geometry node modifier itself, and now it would become a destructive cube basically, right? So you could also do that if you needed to. But it's, it's probably better to keep these as non-destructive as possible for as long as you can until you have to absolutely have to do something like that. So you know, if you bevel this here now, let's see, we can just bevel it. And maybe we just use a regular bevel for a second. Might be a good habit with this particular setup. Shade it auto. Oh, can't shade it smooth yet, so you just wait until later. And so we we'll do a Boolean union. We can grab this whole thing later on. Shift D to duplicate the base. Right click, convert it to a mesh, send it out. Now you can shade auto smooth all day long. Does not matter. You can see you can also add weighted normals to it and whatnot. Um, and maybe even additional bevels if needed or, or whatever the case. But uh, certainly going to be up to you to determine how you want to work with this, but you can see if you're making something like a camera, perhaps, or whatever, uh, this could be quite useful for the blocking phase, especially, and might put it to use. Who knows? All right. So, anyways, that's all this video is about. Just showing you, you know, how you can set these things up. So now you can go through and do the rest of them if you wanted to. Some of them might have a couple different type of inputs, and you might have to fiddle around with it a bit, but for the most part, you'll get the hang of it. Anyways, that's it for this video. I'll check you out in the next one, all right? Take care.